we're going to take a look at some hypothesis testing. So hypothesis testing is an important technique in inferential statistics. So we just have a look at a bit of the theory and then we do some examples. So what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is a conjecture or a claim about a property of a population. So for example, I could claim that I think 40% of Leaving Cert students smoke cigarettes. You know, that would be the claim about the population of Leaving Cert students. I might claim that the average weight of an Irish man is 80 kilograms. And so I'm making a claim about the average weight of the population of Irish men. You know, so this is the type of idea. And we can test how likely that claim is to be true based on information from a sample. So the procedure for hypothesis testing. And what we have here is 95%. In other words, it's related to our confidence intervals. We're going to be 95% sure. In other words, there's a 5% chance we're wrong. And in hypothesis testing, we call that alpha. So alpha equals 0 0.05. And, you know, that is the chance that we are incorrect for rejecting the null hypothesis. So you're never 100% sure in these things. So we're going to be 95% sure at leaving certain level. So the procedure is as such, identify the null and alternate hypothesis, label the claim, calculate the confidence interval, and we did that in our previous lesson, so it's important you already know how to calculate confidence intervals, and make the decision. And the decision is based on H0, which is your null hypothesis. And how you make the decision is like this. If the stated hypothetical mean or proportion, now this will come from your null hypothesis. So the stated hypothetical mean or proportion is your null hypothesis. If that lies within the confidence interval between the lower and upper bounds, then we do not reject the null hypothesis. And then if the stated hypothetical mean or proportion, i.e. your null hypothesis, lies outside the confidence interval, then we reject the null hypothesis. Notice here I'm saying mean or proportion. So similar to confidence intervals, hypothesis testing can be done on means and also on proportions. The null hypothesis, H0 we often label it, states that there is no difference between the population proportion and a stated parameter. So in other words, the null hypothesis will always contain an equals to sign. All right, if there's no difference, then we have an equals to sign. All right, so the null hypothesis will always contain the equals to sign. The alternate hypothesis states that there is a difference between the population proportion and the stated parameter. So the null or the alternate hypothesis will always therefore contain the not equals to sign, saying there is a difference. Now at leaving cert level, we are only dealing with two-tailed hypothesis tests. So we have our 95%, so our 0 0.95, and then you have your 0 0.025 in this tail and your 0 0.025 in that tail. And when you add up those two tails, that's where we get our alpha being 0 0.05. So a two-tailed hypothesis test means we're looking at either equals to or not equals to. All right, we don't have to worry about greater than and less than symbols. This, the greater than and less than symbols that we have in a one-tailed hypothesis test. So at leaving cert level, we only deal with a two-tailed hypothesis test, so we're only dealing with equals to and not equals to situations. Let's take a look at an example. So we're going to look at this question here, this question that's labeled question eight. The director of a multinational company claims that the average hourly wage of the company's factory workers is 12 euros 50 per hour. A sample of 50 employees had a mean hourly wage of 10 euros and 50 cent with a standard deviation of 2 euros and 26 cent. At alpha equals 0 0.05, is there enough evidence to reject the director's claim? So what we'll do here is we follow the exact procedure that we've already discussed. So the first step, identify the null and alternate hypothesis. So if we go back to the question here, remember the null hypothesis always contains the equals to sign. Okay, so the null hypothesis, we label it H0 for null hypothesis and it will always contain the equals to sign. And the alternate hypothesis, we label it HA or H1 and that will contain the not equals to sign. This is a question on means and standard deviations. So the mean, the, the symbol for population mean is mu. So the claim is that the 
average, the population average. Now our population in this case is all the factory workers. All right, all the factory workers. So that's our population. The claim is that the population is 12 euros and 50 cent. Therefore the alternate is that it's not equal to 12 euros and 50 cent. So the null hypothesis, the average is 12 euros and 50 cents. And that is also the claim. And the alternate hypothesis, the average is not equal to 12 euros and 50 cent. So then I've done that. I've identified the null and alternate hypothesis. Label the claim. So I label the claim. So in this case, the null hypothesis, the claim that the average wage is equals to 12 euros and 50 cents. It is important to do this because the claim will not always be the null. Some people make a common mistake assuming that the claim will always be the null. Not necessarily. Sometimes the claim will actually be the alternate. And we will look at some examples of that later. So I've done my first two steps. I have identified the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis and I've labeled the claim. What's the next step? The next step is to calculate the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval. So remember, we had a formula for the confidence interval for a mean, which was X bar plus or minus 1.96 times the standard error, and the standard error was sigma over root n. So we can just use that right here. So that's what we will do. So we will use that formula to get the confidence interval. So X bar, if you remember, is your sample mean. So CI confidence interval, X bar, so X bar is our sample mean, which was 1050. So 1050 plus or minus 1.96 times, and sigma, which is our standard deviation, is 2.26 over the square root of N over the square root of 50. And remember the format for presenting this, we put the lower, we do the minus option and create our lower bound for the left and the plus option and create our upper bound for the right. When I do that, my lower bound is 9.87 and my upper bound is 11.13. So this confidence interval, which is based on the sample I had, tells me that we're 95% sure that the average is somewhere between 9 euros and 87 cent and 11 euros and 13 cent. That's what the confidence interval is telling me. So what's my next step? Make the decision based on your null hypothesis. And to make that decision, if the stated hypothetical mean, and our example, the stated hypothetical mean was 12 euros and 50 cents. So that's what we're talking about in this example. If that lies within the confidence interval, we accept the null hypothesis. It's better, rather than use the word accept, I would prefer to say we do not reject. All right, it's probably better to say we do not reject the null hypothesis. If the stated hypothetical mean our proportion lies outside, then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so back to our example. Our null hypothesis is what the average is 1250. Our confidence interval tells us we're 95% sure that the average is somewhere between 9 euros 87 and 11 euros and 13. So you guys know what that means. That means we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So I can finish that off over here. So therefore, we reject the null hypothesis. So it's always the null hypothesis that you either reject or do not reject. Okay? So then, make a conclusion. So if we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we're rejecting the claim as well, since the claim was the same as the null hypothesis. So to finish that off then, that means we reject the claim that the average wage is... 12 euros and 50 cents. So it's a fairly straightforward technique, especially if you already know your confidence intervals. Now we can also do a hypothesis test for proportions. So let's have an example here where we look at proportions. So a drug company produces a new drug to help significantly lower cholesterol. 
The company claims that the drug worked 78% of the time. A group of doctors doubted the company's claim. They prescribed the drug for a group of 2,500 patients. After one year, 1,850 of these patients' cholesterol had been significantly lowered by the drug. Test the company's claim that the drug had a 78% success rate at the 5% significance level. So that 5% significance level, that's the same thing as alpha being 0.05. That's related to our 95% confidence interval. So we don't need to worry about that. So this is a question on proportions. So the method is still the same. The first step, identify your null and your alternate hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that the proportion equals 0 0.78. And the alternate, we can use H1 for the alternate as well. So I use H1 this time rather than HA. Is that the proportion is not equals to 0 0.78. Then remember we have to identify the claim. The claim is that it works 78% of the time. So in this case, the null is the claim again. So the claim that the drug has a 78% success rate. All right, that's our claim. So then we have to get our confidence interval. And remember your formula for confidence intervals for proportions, P hat plus or minus 1.96 times the standard error, which is the square root of P hat by one minus P hat all over N. So that's the formula we're going to be filling into this time. Now we have to calculate our p hat. Remember, p hat is your sample proportion. So in our case, p hat, our sample proportion, is 1850 divided by 2500. So 1850 out of 2500 people the drug worked for. And that is 0 0.74. So that's our p hat. So creating our confidence interval then, we have our confidence interval, so CI for confidence interval, P hat 0 0.74 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.74 by 1 minus 0 0.74 all divided by N, which in this case is 2,500. And remember how we present our answer. The true population proportion will lie somewhere between our lower and our upper bound. My lower bound, 0 0.723, and my upper bound, 0 0.757. So this tells us that based on the sample, we expect the true proportion to be somewhere between 0 0.723 and 0 0.757. We're 95% confident of that. So does 0 0.78 lie in that range? No, it does not. So we know what that means. Once again, we are rejecting, rejecting the null hypothesis, and therefore we reject the company's claim that the drug has a 75% success rate, or 78% success rate. Let's have a look at one last question here. And this is gonna be one where the claim may not necessarily be the null. So let's have a look. John claims a die is biased towards the number six. Out of 100 rolls, the number six came up 25 times. Is there enough evidence to support John's claim at the 5% significance level? So once again, start off with our null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis. We're dealing with proportions, so we're going to be using P equals and P does not equal. So, if you're dealing with a dice, and the number six should come up one out of six times. So the proportion should be one out of six, which as a decimal is 0 0.167. And then either it equals one out of six or it doesn't equal one out of six. Now, which one of these is the claim? John is claiming that the dice is biased. So if the dice was fair, if it was a fair dice, the proportion would be one out of six. If it was an unfair dice, the proportion would be something other than one out of six. So it's the alternate hypothesis where the, is the claim that the dice is biased. So that's the claim that the die is biased. So same again, let's get our confidence interval. So our confidence interval. 
So P hat in this case was out of 100 rows, the number six came up 25 times. So 25 out of 100, so 0 0.25. So our confidence interval, P hat 0 0.25 plus or minus 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.25 by 1 minus 0 0.25 all over n, all over 100. So our confidence interval then, the lower bound 0 0.165 and the upper bound 0 0.335. So there's our confidence interval. So then if we look at the hypothesis, the null hypothesis we're testing, we want the proportion to be 0 0.167. So 0 0.167 does lie within this range. It does lie within that range. Therefore, in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, there's not enough evidence. So, not enough evidence to support the claim. Not enough evidence to support the claim that the dice is biased. So this was an interesting question because once again the claim was not necessarily the null so that's what we have to watch out for and we also had to realize that one out of six was the proportion that we were dealing with so that is our hypothesis testing you would have noticed that we used the confidence interval for all of our hypothesis tests and that's a perfectly acceptable way to do a hypothesis test there is other methods to, for hypothesis testing where you use what's called the test statistic and the p-value. So I will go through those in the next video. But it's important to understand they're just different ways of doing the exact same thing. So the confidence interval method is perfect, but we do have some other methods and you can see that in the next video.